Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, a very biased collection. Today I would like to talk about moduli spaces without really talking about moduli spaces because they are very difficult, uh, kind of uh, a little bit difficult. I hope I will cover them eventually in a, a different video, but I will say, keep it very easy. Today I will just talk about matrices and matrix problems. So matrix equivalent theorem. I don't think this theorem has a really good name, so I just call it the matrix equivalent theorem and we will see what it is. And it's kind of very strange. It's this uh, increase of complexity, this explosion type increase of co complexity where you go from one, which is reasonably easy, to two, which is kind of doable, but a bit ugh. And uh, for three, you can, just, you can just forget it. And it's really, really beautiful. And I will tell you later how to think about it if you like that in that language. But for now, we just uh, talk about matrices. So let's talk about matrices. Uh, everyone likes matrices. If you don't like matrices, uh, I'm very sorry. This video is probably not for you. Um, I certainly like matrices. <laughs> so we're talking about matrix problems. M equals one. So what is M here? So I have uh, matrices, A, A1 up to AM. So A equals one, I just have A. And B equals one, I just have B. So uh, M equals one, I just have B. So I have two kind of sets of matrices, A1 up to AM and B1 up to B. And I'm asking whether I can make them simultaneously equivalent for general M, which just means, um, so uh, this should be an AI, uh, BI or the whole set. Um, so A is a set, A is a set B. If you want, they are equivalent by definition. If you can find two matrices that are invertible, P and Q, such that you can conjugate one to the other. Right? So that's the usual notion of equivalence of matrices just for more than one in principle. And note that, and that's kind of the point here, I'm not choosing different matrices for different indices. I have one matrix P, I have one matrix Q, and I still want to conjugate all of them. And this is what is, makes it so tricky um, for higher M because kind of you, you kind of use P and Q to simplify A, one, but it doesn't, well, a, B1 in this case, because I'm applying it to B1, but then it might mess up B2, for example. So you kind of need to find the right balance what to do. But anyway, so we want to classify them. And because these problems are so ridiculously hard, we just stay over the easiest field I can imagine. So say over the complex numbers. So these problems are really hard. And the M equals one case is very deceiving um, because we all know the answer. So let's do M equals one together. So M equals one is just A equals, uh, what is my notation? Q inverse B and P. And P and Q can be anything. In particular, we can do row and column operations. And the normal form for this is just the one where you have a unit matrix at the top, which is just given by the rank and the rest is zero. So the classification itself is just given by the rank let's say all of them are fixed, like n cross n matrices. And this is of course kind of known for a long time. Sometimes it's attributed to Gauss, but it's way, way older to kind of, this is used to solve linear system of equations or system of linear equations, I guess, the right way of saying it. Uh, so this is very nice, right? So you, you can simplify B uh, via column and row operations. Right? So either from the left or the right, I'm not quite sure which one are column and which one are row operations, but anyway, it doesn't matter. You can simplify them using column and row operations. And since you only have one A to worry about or one B to worry about, you can just make it simpler, 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 simpler until you hit this matrix here. And then the classification is given by rank. Really easy. Um, yeah, and now comes the M equals two case and we can't do this track anymore. It's way more difficult. Because now, let's say you are doing row and column operation to simplify B1, but then you might make B2 more complicated, right? So that's a bit, a bit tricky, and it's not so clear what you should do. But clearly, this is kind of an interesting question. It's like related to simultaneously solving system of linear equations. So people have tried that. And if very smart people have tried that, and the answer is still a bit, <laughs> then... Um, you probably shouldn't try it yourself. But anyway, I'm, I just should say I shouldn't try it myself. And M equals two is already doable. It's doable, but it's a bit ugly-ish. And you get a very, very different classification, actually. Um, so the, a normal form is, is known. 
It's known since the days of Chronica, maybe even a bit earlier. And it's called Chronica's canonical form. And essentially it's like a Jordan form, but now you have could have different blocks. And one block even depends on the parameter. Um, and then there's another parameter which kind of plays the role of the eigenvalues of the matrix. So there's a lambda and the alpha parameter. And you have just different types of Jordan blocks, but otherwise your matrix then has this little block form here that you know from Jordan blocks, right? So all of your matrices have those form. Um, and this is just saying that M equals two is first of all, way more complicated than M equals one, where we just had classification by rank, but it's also saying that we have way more parameters here. We have uh, finitely many discrete parameters, which is essentially just the sizes and the, the, the types of the block, the blocks. And we have continuous parameters, which are alpha and lambda, which you can think of as being the eigenvalues of the problem. So way more parameters to classify uh, these equivalence classes of simultaneously uh, equivalent matrices, right? So here it's just the rank and everyone knows that and that's covered in linear algebra. Well, everyone knows that, whatever. It's covered in linear algebra. It's just given by the rank. And here it's just, oh, it's already pretty difficult. Um, so what about M equals three, you might say, you might guess. Um, and it turns out that M equals three is an open problem or essentially an impossible problem, depends a bit um, how you would like to call, like to say it. And roughly it's as following. So you can associate the whole matrix equivalence problem to a quiver. And what is a quiver? Quiver is this thing here. So um, a quiver is just a directive graph and the name comes from the, uh, well, <laughs> it contains arrows. So what is a quiver? It contains arrows. So that's where the name comes from. Maybe I should make this a little bit blackish. <laughs> so anyway, quiver is just a name for a directed graph. That's it. And it's very simple. You just have two vertices and you have one arrow, so M arrows, one arrow, two arrows, three arrows. So the, the problem can be associated to a certain problem uh, about quiver representations. Anyway, and then you can formally prove that M equal three is an essentially impossible problem. So this quiver is kind of easy. <laughs> this quiver is kind of doable. We'll see some other statement in a second. And this quiver is just whoop, gone. So it's kind of interesting. One equals uh, M equals one rank easy. M equals two is a bit, uh, it's a bit, yeah. Well, it's doable, but it's, <laughs> well, not super nice. Nothing I would like you to remember. Just remember that it's a bit difficult, but doable. And M equals three is just forget it. Just, you don't even need to try it. It's too hard. There, there won't be any nice classification. And there's this funny statement, which makes that completely precise for all of them and even more um, is the following. A matrix problem associated to a quiver, Q, and let's say it doesn't have oriented cycles. So here, of course, we don't have any oriented cycles. So those matrix problems are fine, is um, kind of finite. You could solve it in, in like the rank case. Yeah? If and only if, I show you the graphs in a second, it's a certain type of graph. It's tame, which essentially is saying that it's like my M equals two case. So a bit more difficult, but you can do it if you work very hard, if and only if it's a certain class of uh, graphs and everything else is just forget it. It's really forget it. And you can make a formal statement in the sense that if you could solve this one then it could solve uh, other problems which are impossible and forget, it's just forget it. You won't find an algorithm listing all the parameters you need for your uh, classification. And I kind of I should make this clear. So Q is a quiver itself, right? This beast here. And my little notation, it doesn't depend on the orientation. So Q bar is just a quiver without orientations. So here, M would be just this one here. Uh, the other one would be just this one, right? Without orientations. And the last one would be uh, this one. This would, Those guys would be the Q bars and these guys here would be the Qs. So it doesn't depend on the orientation. And the orientation is just telling you in what direction your, your matrix goes, if you want. So here, base change on one and base change on the other, if you want. Anyway, let me show you the graphs. So this is a pretty good statement. It's not solving those cases, but it tells you uh, what you can try and what you should forget. Um, so, and it's a really beautiful classification. It's ADE classification. It's the usual ADE classification. Ha, <laughs> it just turns up everywhere. Anyway, um, so uh, I kind of 
so this one here can have non-oriented cycles. So can, it can have an oriented cycle, but you want the one without oriented cycles, right? So this is just, uh, just this extra condition. For the other ones, you can't have cycles anyway. Anyway, so these are the ADE types and only for these graphs, you are good. Where the kind of the funny situation of A uh, one twiddle is exactly this graph here. So this is A one twiddle and A one, uh, A two, I guess, is just this graph. So these are these are our two problems from here. And the third one doesn't appear. It's everything else. And it's kind of a fun classification. First of all, it tells you that problems can get much more complicated if you just make, make it a little bit more complicated. That's what it seems like. And they just explode in complexity. In particular, everything that is not on this list yeah, everything that is not on this list gives you a matrix problem, which is essentially impossible to solve, which is kind of a cool statement in its own. Uh, but also for the lovers, so ADE kind of turns up everywhere. Uh, so here's another example of an ADE classification. So ADE is kind of very strange. So I'm a collector. I collect statements that are related to ADE classifications. Uh, here's another one. Um, anyway, so these appear everywhere. Let me just go back. If it's ADE type, this is this column, then it's an easy matrix problem. And that's not obvious at all if you just have a matrix problem related to many matrices in many, kind of many, many matrices here. Um, and here, this is the other column. That is the one you can try, but you probably shouldn't. <laughs> and everything else is uh, you shouldn't try it. That's, that's kind, of a, a, a kind of a cool statement, actually. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video about ADE graphs and kind of whatever, everything else. So kind of this jumping complexity. And I also hope to see you next time.